Okay, so today we are going to read from Numbers 13, the whole entire chapter, okay? So it says, The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are their names. From the tribe of Rubian, Shemua, son of Zechor, from the tribe of Simeon, Shabbat, sons of Hori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of Ishar, Eagle, son of Joseph, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun, um, from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Rapu, from the tribe of Zeb Zebulun, Gadiel, son of Sodi, from the tribe of Manasseh, a tribe of Joseph, Gadi, son of Susi, from the tribe of Dan, Amiel, son of Gamali, from the tribe of Asher, Sether, son of Michael, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabhab, son of Vasi, from the tribe of Gad, Geol, son of Machai. These are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, um, the name Joshua. Uh, when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go to, through the Negvith and on to the hill country. See what the land is like and whether people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in there, in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob toward Lebo Hamath. They went through the Nekviv and came to Hebron where Ahiman, uh, he, uh, Shishai and Talmai, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had been built several seventeen or seven years, seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land um, to which you have sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit, but the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Nak there. The Amalekites live in Nekva, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored um, devours those living in it. All the people we saw are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendant of Nak who came from Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our eyes, and we look the same to them. Okay, may God bless you with that reading. And now we're going to talk about uh, the reading, okay? So this is my notepad. Um, so in Deuteronomy 1, in 19, uh, verses 19 through 25, it gives you the procedural um, details of how they were supposed, these um, spies went out um, when they went to Canaan. So it, it goes, Then as the Lord our God commanded, commanded us, we set out from Horeb 
and went toward the hill country of the Amorites through the vast and dreadful wilderness you have seen. And so we reached Kadesh Barina. Then I said to you, we have, you have reached the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God has given us. See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it. Um, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, told you, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the towns we will come to. The idea seemed good to me, so I selected 12 of you, one man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Ishko and explored it, taking with them some of the fruit of the land. They brought it um, down to us and reported, it's a good land that the Lord our God has given us. So, the land is good, um, but they're fearful, okay? Um, so, when, from verses 4 through um, 15, it gives you who these um, exact people were that they sent out. And if you notice that... Um, Levi's, the Levi's were not included in the negotiations about the land. Uh, there's still 12. Um, Joseph's um, tribe was broken into two because he had two sons, um, Ephraim and Manasseh. So those are the two. Um, remember, the Levi's were the religious, the priests and stuff, the religious leaders, the priests. Okay. Um, in verse 16, it talks about Hosea was given the name Joshua, and Joshua's going to be a very important later on. Um, and Jesus' name actually means Joshua in Jewish, the Jewish language. And if we go to Matthew 1, 21. Hold on. Matthew 1, 21. It says... Um, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And then, um, it means it's Hebrew for he saves. Okay. They were, um, in the wilderness of Paran in, um, Kadesh Barnanya, which is about 50 miles south of the promised land. Um, that, so there's, again, we, we think about the, um, numbers that are important, um, when we're talking about the biblical stuff. Um, 12 men, tw you know, the 12 disciples. Um, again, 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Uh, they spent 40 days. Again, 40 is another important number. We think about Moses, um, not Moses, Noah. And we think about when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was tempted for 40 days. Um, they gathered, you know, samples of the local crops. Um, they had good news and bad re news to report. Um, which divides the people, um, going around and spying on others. That's a good military tactic um, that, that they did of the day that's very popular. They traveled 275 miles in those 40 days. So that's a lot of miles. Okay. So the first land they come to is Nekva, and it was dry. Um, and then they, when they continued on, there was Canaan, which was much more, more fertile, the, there was grass all over the hills, um, which means that they could, um, that there was going to be uh, milk producing goats and sheep. So there's milk, remember, because it's milk and honey, uh, God talked about. And then there was flowers that produced, flower producing plants and flowers, which gave them pollen for the bees to turn in honey. So there's where the milk and honey and stuff. This is two years after leaving Egypt, and they found their land. But guess what? They were still fearful because they didn't have faith in God. So as a result, God decided, uh, Yahweh or God decided, hey, you don't want to be, um, you don't want, you you don't want to believe in me. You don't want to have faith in me. I am going to make you wander in the desert, one year for every day you were gone to go and spy on this this land. Um. So they were. You know, they noticed these people were very big. You know, they were giants, the Nephil Nephilim. So they were. They didn't want to go against them. Uh, and there's only one other time that these... <coughs> I apologize. Nephilim 
were mentioned in the Bible, and that is in Genesis um, 4, 6. Let me read it to you. No, not 4, 6. 6, 4. I'm sorry. 6, 4. Genesis 6, 4. That's me. Um, made me not think. Okay. So it says, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, um, and also afterward. When the sons of the, that's not right. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. Um, but those Nephilim were um, destroyed in the flood. So I don't know where, you know, the, we don't know where these um, came from. And then we need to have Caleb's faith. Caleb's faith. In 1330, it says, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. So he's a man of great faith. Okay, with that, be blessed. Uh, may these words um, help you in some way. Uh, and I will see you on the flip side. Um, next time we will continue on with the um, God's people wandering in the desert. Bye.